It wasn't long after 2010 that hard drives began to die out. And then it wasn't long after that until SSDs began to be replaced with NVMe SSDs. So now that we're in the 2020s, perhaps it's time that NVMe SSDs had a run for their money. I'm talking about replacing them with this. This here is just typical RAM. It's the same old system RAM that we've been using in our systems for donkey's years. But it's also the fastest type of storage in our systems. So perhaps, perhaps today is the day that we should finally experiment with installing Windows 10 directly onto our system RAM. Will it help? Now I don't want to get too far into this video before I address some of your guys' concerns because I can already hear you guys shouting out to me about all the potential issues that this could bring up. And well, how about we take a look at them? The biggest is that RAM, well, as you guys know, as I know, it's volatile memory. That means when your system loses power, anything that's in your RAM is gone. It's obliterated, it's not recoverable. And so, well, if we're keeping our operating system in RAM, doesn't that mean that every time we turn it off, we're going to lose our operating system? And yes, you're kind of right. Well, actually, no, in typical circumstances, you'd be correct. You'd be perfectly right. But I have got a solution and a workaround so that that isn't going to be the case for us. The other big, big issue that we could be running into is the fact that, well, I've only got 32 gigabytes of RAM. And considering we're going to have to allocate some of that to our host machine, as well as some of it to our VM, well, that's not going to leave us much for our Windows storage space. But don't worry, we've got yet another solution for that lined up. So don't worry. They're all the main concerns. Those two things right there are the main concerns and we've got them covered. I will be looking at those later on in the video and showing you how we're going to get around it. So I'm sure we all know the main reason why you might want to install Windows 10 onto your system RAM is the direct speed benefit. There are potentially huge gains to be had here, even over the world's fastest NVMe SSDs. But how about we take a look at the underlying theory as to why you could potentially gain these huge speed benefits from installing directly onto your system RAM in comparison to an SSD or hard drive. So why could you potentially benefit from a RAM disk? Well, here's the basic theory. You may be under the misconception that modern SSDs are so fast they can outperform system RAM. And well, in terms of bandwidth and sequential write speeds, you might be right. But unfortunately, it doesn't all boil down to bandwidth. The other important factor we need to consider is latency. If you're not sure on the difference, here's a quick explanation. Think of bandwidth as how much of something can be transferred in a set amount of time, and then consider latency to be the length of time it takes for that something to reach its destination. If you're still not sure on why the difference is important, then here's an easy example. Imagine. Rather than electrical traces on a motherboard, your CPU gets data and information by driving a truck full of data from the Intel headquarters directly to your house. Now let's take that big old truck, fill it with thousands of SSDs and drive it across town. We would have transferred petabytes of data in just a few minutes. Now that's a huge bandwidth. But if you're trying to move your mouse and have to wait a few minutes to find out if you've selected the right icon, well, even though you've transferred lots of data, it's not going to be very useful, right? That's latency. So even if you have a huge bandwidth, you still need to have a small enough latency for things to work properly and make sense. So now we all understand that. Here is why RAM is so great. RAM has the benefit of the huge bandwidth, but it also has the benefit of that tiny, tiny latency. One of the reasons RAM has such great latency is that it is perfectly optimized for random access. It's even in the name, random access memory. 90% of your operating system's calls are going to be for random chunks of data. So your OS sees very little benefit from the great sequential speeds of traditional hard drives and SSDs. Sequential access is great for data storage, but random access will always be king for operating systems. So with the theory out of the way, how about we get started with the practicalities? You're going to want to start by taking a RAM disk utility of choice. I'm going to be using a tool called IMDisk. I've used a couple of different tools and experimented around and this one happens to be my favourite and I think it's the easiest to use. Not to mention it's also free. So taking this tool, it's a case of selecting the size of your RAM disk. That's the first step. Now we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, so a good middle ground for us is going to be 20 because that gives us still some space for our host system, aka the actual physical machine, as well as some RAM to allocate to our virtual machine. So 20 is our good little middle ground. 
Then you're gonna have to select a drive letter. Anything that isn't already used, it works here. So I'm gonna go with A, file system. We're gonna be using Windows. So NTFS is gonna be the right option to pick. And then it's just gonna be a case of pressing OK. So that's gonna go through a couple of steps. It's gonna mount the new RAM disk. It's gonna go ahead and it's gonna eventually, here we go, so it's popping up now. And now it's going to appear as basically any other mass storage device, like a hard drive or an SSD. So if I was to open up Windows Explorer here, and there we go, there's our RAM disk. It's brand new, it's empty, and it's 20 gigabytes. So now we have this, what do we do next? Well, we're gonna to have to create what's known as a virtual machine. And the tool that I've selected to do this is Oracle's VM Virtual Box. And it's another really easy tool to use. All you're gonna need is a Windows 10 ISO. Now, interestingly enough, I've decided not to go for a 64-bit version of Windows. And the reason for that is because, well, a 64-bit installation is actually several gigabytes larger than a 32 gigabyte installation. So all we're gonna do is go into VirtualBox, press new. We're going to go with RAM disk test as our name for the machine because, well, you can pick anything. Now, the machine folder, it's important to select our RAM disk. So we're gonna go into this PC, select our RAM disk and select the folder. Our type is Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows. Our version is gonna be Windows 10 32-bit. Now, here's where we have to select our memory size. So this is how much RAM you want to allocate to your virtual machine. In this case, I'm gonna go with, uh, let's say about six-ish gigabytes. It doesn't have to be precise, but we're gonna put it about six gigabytes. So we're gonna also go ahead and create ourselves a virtual hard disk. Uh, just stick with the default here. Uh, you want to go with fixed size though, you don't want to dynamically allocate it. And because we've got a 20 gigabyte uh, partition on our RAM, we're going to want to select just under 20 gigabytes for our virtual disk. So let's go with 19.04. That should do the trick. And create. So this is going to go ahead and set up our virtual machine, ready for us to install Windows 10 into our RAM. There we go. So. The next step, this is where things start to get exciting. It's a case of pressing start. And then once it's started up the virtual machine, as you can see it here doing, we're going to have to select our ISO file that we created earlier. So adding that, windows.iso, choose and start. Now, as you can see here, it's gonna go ahead and start up our virtual machine and begin installing Windows 10 directly onto our system RAM. I think it's going to be fairly safe to skip through these next couple of steps because, well, this is just a plain old boring Windows installation. So I'm going to get Windows installed and I will see you when Windows is fully installed on our RAM. If you cast your minds back to the beginning of this video, I posed a couple of potential problems that we could face by using a Windows 10 installation that's based on our RAM. And well, I'm here to give you the answers just before we get into our Windows 10 speed test. So the first question we're going to tackle is, what do you do when you run out of space? Because, well, 20 gigabytes certainly isn't enough space for a typical Windows 10 installation. And well, I've kind of got an answer for that. I know I said I had a proper answer, but it's only a kind of answer. What we're going to be doing is using a feature called shared folders. And what this will allow us to do is access hard drives and SSDs on our host machine as a network drive rather than a physical drive that's attached to the PC. And so it's not really a network drive, but Windows recognizes it as one. You'll see what I mean. So let's take a look at the PC here. You can see my E drive. If I click on that, it works just as a normal folder accessing the hard drive on my host machine. So this is just where I keep all of my games. If I go onto my actual Windows PC, you can see it here outside of the VM as the games drive. Here it is, outside of the VM. Exact same thing, replicated, you can modify on both the host and the virtual machine. The other question that I thought you guys might ask is what happens when you turn off the host PC? Well, you will lose the virtual machine if you don't do a couple of steps beforehand. Because this is a virtual machine, we can easily back it up. All you need to do is copy the, or you know, cut the files out of the RAM disk, put them somewhere on your SSD, your hard drive, whatever, and then you can unmount the RAM disk. It will go away, you can turn off the host PC. Then when you start it back up, just recreate the RAM disk, move the files back across, open up VirtualBox and start it up as usual as if nothing had ever happened. It's as easy as that. It's a bit tedious and a bit fiddly, but 
you know, that one or two extra steps, not the end of the world. And so that only leaves us the one big question, the question that this entire video is about. Is it faster? Well, if I go to Windows, you know, I can browse it, I can move around, everything works as I'd expect, as it would in a regular Windows 10 installation. It feels just as fast and just as snappy. But the question is, does it perform better? Well, it's hard to tell just by, you know, browsing around and doing your day-to-day -day activities. However, we do have a piece of software called Crystal Disk Mark. And as you guys saw earlier in the video, we saw the speeds that we would expect from an SSD as well as a RAM disk. And well, guys, it is time for the moment we have all been waiting for. Is our RAM disk virtual machine as fast as we were hoping? And well, I don't need to look at the results behind me because I've done this already. I already know the results. And guys, the answer is kind of. It is certainly faster than our NVMe drive. However, it's definitely not as fast as our RAM disk. It's within the margin of error for sure. However, it's definitely not up there with our straight recording previously in the video where we recorded it in the high 6000 range. So yes, you can do this. Yes, it will work. But my God, is it not worth it? This was a lot of hassle for, well, we, I mean, technically, yeah, we've got faster speeds, but in day-to-day -day use, you're never, ever, ever going to notice it. And the hassle of having to save the state of your machine and back it up every time you turn it off, and also the fact that you have to add all these virtual drives to be able to actually store anything, no, you guys should not be doing this because, the well, there's no benefit. That's, that's, that's the entire reason why. Man, this video, uh, that's an anticlimactic ending really, isn't it? I was kind of hoping that I could say, yeah, there's great benefits, but wow, there just really isn't. Anyway, do be sure to hit like and subscribe on this video because I've spent far too long working on it. Weeks, weeks this took. Weeks!